What should you do when your computer turns on to a blue screen? No, don't do this. You're gonna wanna start in recovery mode. That's what this is, automatic repair. So if you can't get into automatic repair, you're gonna have to get a Windows install flash drive, which is a whole nother subject. It's not too hard. Look up the media creation tool. Then you'll boot into that and that will get you into recovery mode. The first thing you wanna do is start easy. You're gonna go on down to troubleshoot, advanced options, and you're gonna try to system restore. If you're like this guy, then you have no restore points available. Moving on to the next step. Next, we're gonna choose startup settings, which is how we're gonna get into safe mode, hopefully. I like to just use safe mode with networking, which is option number five. As you can see, it booted straight into recovery once again. That's not gonna work. We're running out of super easy repairs, so we're gonna go back into troubleshoot, we're gonna go into advanced options, and we're gonna go with command prompt. Once you're here, I want you to run disk part, just like that. And then you're gonna list volumes, which is just VOL. And it is important to mention that on this screen, if any of your volumes are in raw format versus NTFS or FAT32, then you pretty much are going to need to reformat your drive. In some cases, data recovery tools can recover that data, but it's unlikely and you're probably just going to have to reinstall Windows on whatever drive you have. And you're going to have to really do a health check on the drive. More on that later. Then you're going to look through these volumes. It looks like this is his secondary hard drive. He quite literally has a 58 gigabyte C drive. You can see over here that it says C. And our next step will be to list the disks. This will tell us if the disk is in GPT or MBR layout. GPT, you can pretty much assume that it's going to be booting via UEFI, which is the modern way to do it, and more or less the right way now. When you're booting with UEFI, you have a FAT32 partition, which we can see right about here. This is where your boot files are typically stored. What you're going to do is select this volume 4, and then we're going to go ahead and assign it a letter. That will be R in this case. You can really use any letter that's not used at the moment. So now you're going to want to exit disk, disk part. Once you exit disk part, now we can do a BCD boot command, which we're pretty much just going to recreate those boot files. This can help in a lot of cases, but in this particular case, a little bit of foreshadowing, it doesn't. So we choose BCD boot C slash Windows, to make sure that you are using the right drive, you do want to make sure that it is actually C and not something else. Sometimes it can be different. You should know by the size of your drive. Slash S, R, so we're pretty much assigning R as where the files will go. And slash F, UEFI, is we're creating UEFI files. Here we actually have the blue screen before it was just going into recovery mode. And we can see that it's MBAM, which is Malwarebytes Anti-Malware. So that means that Malwarebytes is actually keeping this computer from booting. Before I go any further, I am going to test the A-Data solid state that is in this computer. It's located down here. 64 gigabytes, it's an A-Data, it's super old, and that very well could be failing. So I have the drive out and plugged into my toaster now. And it is actually trying to pull up. Okay, it is pulling up the E-Drive now. So this is an A-Data SSD, so we're going to pull up the A-Data SSD toolbox. And while we wait for that to load, I'm actually going to open up Victoria 357. It is a great hard drive SSD tester. And the drive is actually testing good. Just for a second opinion, I'm going to open up Crystal Disk Info and see what it says about the drive. It's also stating that it's good with 94% health status. And this is something that you can do within Command Prompt of recovery we're going to go ahead and do a check disk e which is the, the drive letter right now you're going to want to check that before you run it but we can see that it is e the 64 gigabyte drive and then we're going to do slash f slash r and that will go through and check for any bad files and then we're going to worry about that malware bytes file that is giving us a problem and this is why you always want to do some research. So it looks like Malwarebytes actually put out a statement about this stating that if you go into er startup settings and then disable early launch anti-malware protection, that will let it boot. So I'm actually going to go ahead and cancel our file check because I doubt it'll do anything anyway. And let's go ahead and pull this drive, put it back in, and then try to boot by disabling early launch anti-malware protection. So we're going to do what Malwarebytes told us to do, go into startup settings and disable with number eight 
early launch anti-malware protection. And we have boot. At this point, we're gonna try to restart the computer and see if that sticks. Point we don't have boot again, so we're gonna do the same thing. So I tried opening Malwarebytes and that didn't work. We got this error that I just have to click through a million times to get it to go away. And my first instinct was to go to control panel and try to uninstall this. But then I thought, what if he has an active license, blah, blah, blah. That's why I was trying to open it in the first place. So I went ahead and actually went to the browser to try to install a fresh version of Malwarebytes. And this failed because there's not enough disk space. It's a 64 gigabyte drive. I mean, what do you expect? So we're just going to completely remove Malwarebytes. It would tell me if it had an active license upon uninstalled, so we're just uninstalling it. I'll let the guy know that this is exactly what happened, and if he wants to reinstall Malwarebytes, he's going to need a little bit more space to do so. Uninstall is finished, so now we're going to attempt to restart the computer and see if it sticks. And it did boot. This was a relatively special case because this had a very specific error, but I want to highlight some of the key things you want to think about when dealing with a boot issue. Now, boot issues are different from power on issues. Powering on when a computer just won't turn on, it won't display your splash screen, that's a totally different story. This is to fix Windows not loading. One of the most key things which we learned today was research your blue screen error. A lot of times there might be a easy to follow guide online from a Microsoft rep or whoever, in this case, Malwarebytes, might help. You wanna start with your easy things because we don't like wasting time. Your system restore, your check disk, your safe mode. Sometimes you can just boot into safe mode, restart the computer, and it just works. And right now, if you're just watching this for some knowledge, then make some restore points. Just set, set the restore point to happen every month, every whatever, whatever it is make at least a restore point that you so you can go back to that whenever also remember the media creation tool that will help you reinstall your software if all else fails i'll continue making videos like this so that you can learn when other problems arise i can show you more specific problems so yeah thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one